In this video, I'll be showing you how to implement remove ad in your app. And also I'll be showing you how you can check if the person still owns the item. For an example, if they uninstall the app, then they install it again. They should be able to own the app, the, the item that they purchased um, while they installed the app for the first time. And also if they are moving to a new device, so the app will be able to check if the person still owns um, the remove ad item right so as always i've prepared a demo ad for you a demo app for you then i will go ahead and open the app now so in this app uh, what you will see at the bottom is the uh the banner ad showing now then the person does not own the the item right so i also have a remote a, a remove ad button then when i click remove ad button then the bottom sheet will be shown this is the launch purchase flow right so when i click there um the purchase is going to process the payment then if the payment is successfully then i'm using the shared preferences right you can check the shared preferences um on google or youtube they do have um tutorials about this one so it's saving a uh, data locally on the device right so you don't need database you just need the shared preference to 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 save um the ones and zeros so in my tutorials i'm using one to show that this person um has a premium item or they 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 they, they, they do have the remove ad as you can see uh, i I, I use this method to say set remove ad so i'm passing one here then i will show you in the vid right let's go back to the demo then on the demo the person has bought the the item right so they need to restart the app open it again then when they open the app now ads are not showing ads are not showing so even if you can go and repurchase this so it says you already own this item so uh as you can see when i open the app this is the splash screen the splash screen is the one that is checking as you can see it says add one the one it means the person has um the remove add item which is the non-consumable item you can only buy it once so uh, i can uninstall it and reinstall the app it's going to take a minute less than a minute in fact aha uh -huh. so it's uh, installed now so splash screen is going to do its work as you can see still no ads are showing because the person owns this item right so in our next chapter I'm going to show you every step that you need to have in app purchase to remove ads. If you like the demo, please consider subscribing and comment if you have any question regarding your development. All right, so now we are going to implement ad remove in our app, right? So you can go to the repository and download the demo app. This is the demo app that we are, we are working on. This one, you can just play around with it. And yeah, then now we are going to follow all the steps by Google. We are going to follow all the steps by Google. So I've made it easier for everyone out there so that you can go to the repository and read all these steps then copy and paste copy and paste copy and paste so the changes they will be only on the show products id in this video we are working on the non-consumable item so this one is going to change because this one is the consumable we are won't, we won't use this one so yeah so the first thing that you need to do for those who are starting their project for the very first time they need to add this uh, dependency under the build gradle file then add this permission on the 
manifest file just need to copy this permission and paste it there let me just show you go to the project now this is the permission copy this permission and paste it here then the build gradle file this is the um the dependence here you need it for the in purchases all right so this is my design the remove add this is button then on the main activity i created a button object which is button remove add therefore the billing client object then i find the button by id and the add by id so here this is where i initialize the the add and load it here right so the first step that we need to do is to initialize the billing client right so you can just go to the repository and copy this and paste it here then the second step is to start connection you take the billing client object then you start the connection then when the connection is established meaning it's connected successfully to google play from your phone then this method will be called on billing setup finished then you need to check if the billing response is okay then you get the product then in the get product method so this is where you need to specify the product id to create a product id you need to go to your to your app select the app scroll down until you see monetize on your left side monetize in-app products then under in-app products this is my product id you can click create product and enter the product id here this is the product id then you can put the rest of the information here and set the price and save the changes in my case I already have the product ID created with the price of 66 rand. If I go back to my project, I put the product ID in this queue list, right? So on the billing client query SKU details async, this method is going to request all the products that we have defined in this queue list. And after um, it, it requested all the products and then on SKU details response, it will be called. Then it's going to return the billing results as well as the list of SKU details, right? So the, 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 the SKU list details, the SKU details list, yes. Then it's the details of the product. What are the details? The details, it's the product ID, the price, the date, the product name, the description, and so on and so on. So I'm creating an object of SKU details because I want to handle um, the product individual. For an example, if I have more than two here, so I'll be able to, to, control, to control them here. But in this case, I only have one. So I also need this object because the launch on launch purchase flow, it needs that object. Then I'm checking if the SKU, the get SKU is equals to remove add. Get SKU is going to return this product ID, right? So SKU, get SKU is returning the product ID. So I'm checking if it's equals to that. If it's equals to that, then I want to handle the clicks now. Then I go to that button. When I click this button, I want to launch the purchase flow, then pass the SKU details. What is this process? This process is this one. If I click, then this is the launch purchase flow. Then now, after launching the purchase flow, like this and then when i tap buy then i want to verify the payment this method is going to verify the payment in this method 
we want to acknowledge the payment we want to acknowledge the payment so this one it's a non-consumable item hence we are using acknowledge purchase then it means that the user will own this product forever right when i acknowledge the purchase right then there is a response that is going to respond right this acknowledge purchase response then when everything is okay then the purchase is acknowledged then i want to set remove it to one one according to me it means true then the person has the product to remove it right it's up to you, you can either use five ten 15 but i prefer one and zero then zero it means false show at still right so this is the verify payment and then again on on resume you need this piece of code this piece of code it's the same as this one where is it okay on resume you also need this piece of code this piece of code is going to uh, check if there are any pending um, products for an example if the user was purchasing your app then the the app crashes right while it was purchasing then when you go back to the activity then the activity is going to on resume it's going to call this method and query the purchases then if the purchases are returned then it's going to verify the payment again the verify method is the same as this one it it won't change okay so when i relaunch the app now i wanna reload it so it's loading so now it's showing ads right so when i go and purchase this then I tap here, then I buy, then I verify the payment, then I set one to remove it, right, on this method to verify payment, this one, then I set one there. Then now, since I set one, I need to check on the main activity where I load the app. I come to where I load the app, I say if press get remove add then if get remove add is equals to zero meaning i need to show the ads right i copy this then i put it inside here remember one is for not showing ads so here i do nothing i do nothing here hence this one is going to return zero if it returns zero then i want to show the ads if it returns one then i'm not showing the ads then uh, it comes here on verify payment on verify payment we just purchased the um the product now we just purchased it then this set removal it's going to be one now meaning here it's going to go to else right when i relaunch the app As you can see now there are no ads showing then when i go to remove ad then it says you already own this item there are no ads showing now it's because of this method you just need to check if zero if get remove ad is equal to zero then show the ad if it's equal to one you don't show the ads it can you can use it on the interstitial as well as the native ads you can use it anyway right so now the last thing that we need to do is to check if the user still owns the item or not so on the splash screen i will just call this method right check products then on check products 
this is the connection i start the connection then on billing setup finished then i want to get the product i query the product right so then the product will be returned in a form of a list and then in the form of a list i want to check if the list size is equal to zero if it's equal to zero it means that person they don't have um, a product then i need to re i need to change this to zero then if the person has um products right if the person have products then i wanna do the object which is purchase then i get the excuse then on the excuse i say um on zero then remove add then i know if this person has this one it means that this person has removed add then i change it to one for an example let me show you this so now i can go back then reopen the app again still the person has the the, the, the product if i come and say remove see i own this product so if you wanna remove this error and test your app again you need to go to your console then go to under order management you can refresh this and check this one it should be the test then remove ads then you need to cancel this and make sure you select this option then refund and now the person does not have the product anymore if you go back then you relaunch the app the splash screen is going to check the product okay i didn't see let me reload the app because i did some changes here so now when i reload the app the app is going to check as you can see now it says zero then it shows the the ad because this person does not have this product anymore so yeah it's this check product then this project is going to check if the products are more than zero or less than zero if you like the video you can if you like the video please comment and subscribe to the channel thank you for watching